Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I must say this correctly. Sin Yen Kwai Le. Blessed Chinese New Year to everyone who are celebrating and for the rest of us, happy holidays. It's a long weekend, hallelujah. But you know, we're all in Malaysia. And the beauty of being Malaysians is that we celebrate and rejoice with every single culture. You know, so, so lovely to grow up surrounded by the cultures here. I think this Chinese New Year is extra special because it has been a long time since so many of you could gather together. Amen? And for those of our GT family, you have traveled to the to across the state boundaries and, and we just want to welcome you and say hallelujah, you can be reunited with your families after such a long time. The last two years have been difficult, not able to travel. In fact, I know there are some who returned back from overseas, right? If you're here, you, PJ is not your hometown, but you are here because Chinese New Year has brought you home to, for, to visit your family and friends. Can you just wave at me? And if you're online, you can just say, I'm here. Any one of you, that's right, I see a couple of hands lifted up. Welcome home, Selamat Pulang. So wonderful to come back home to the family of God. And wow, it's Choyat, it's the first day. And y'all have chosen to come before the presence of the Lord to give the first fruits of your blessings and of your praise to the Lord. Wow. Tell your neighbor, so good to see you today. And I see a sea of red, a sea of red and oranges and, and all the happy colors. You guys look amazing. You guys look good. Hallelujah. You know Chinese New Year? It's always a, a fun time to, to see the malls being decorated, right? All the lovely decorations and you wonder like, okay, what kind of new things will they come up with? And they're very creative. And there's always the, the songs. There's lots of decorations and songs. And of course, at the home front, all the special food comes out, right? Some of y'all only cook this food once a year. Wow. And once a year, everybody looks forward to the special dishes by the aunties and the uncles. And it's such a, a joyful time. And of course, for those younger unmarried ones, huh, what time is it? It's time for? Anpa! <laughs> but even the, the older ones also shout Anpa also. Huh? I like that. <laughs> so, you know, Chinese New Year, so much things, so many things to celebrate about. And, you know, um, Chinese New Year, I, I also get the privilege because in my own family, Growing up, I have three aunties who are Chinese. Three of my uncles, they married Chinese. And so we had a glimpse of a little bit of Chinese New Year even growing up. And even now, I'm so blessed that my own brother, he has married a Chinese wife. So I have a lovely sister in love, not in law, in love. That's also Chinese and that celebrate along. And so, you know, we are so much together and we just enjoy celebrating, you know, the things that matter to one another. And... All my life growing up, I always grew up wishing everybody kong si fa chai, right? Kong fa choy, right? Correct, I say. Uh. <laughs> and, and it was only in recent years that I realized that that greeting is actually about wishing prosperity, wishing riches, correct? Wishing blessings. And so I was like, oh, I see. And then, then someone else taught me, see, what ah? Must say how again ah? Sin yen kwai le. You know, and that, that is the literal translation of Happy Chinese New Year. And but that got me pondering. It's not that that receiving blessings is wrong because you know what? God wants to bless His children. Can I hear an amen? amen. But we need to understand, get the right understanding, the right aspect of what God's blessing is all about so that we don't have misunderstandings in how we, we expect the blessings of God. So today, I'm going to share with you about blessings unlocked. How many of you all want to have your blessings unlocked? Amen? Amen. Amen. We want to get the blessings of the Lord unlocked. Let's pray before we, we go ahead. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, for you are an amazing, amazing Father, and we love you. We thank you for the privilege of calling you Father. And Father, we ask for your presence to be with us, even as we, we get into your word to understand 
what your blessings are for every one of us here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, why is it important to understand about blessings? Because there is a very dangerous theology out there. A theology which talks about prosperity. It's called the prosperity gospel. Some of you have heard of it. And it's very dangerous because it only focuses only on one element and that makes it seem like as though God owes you a promise of continued riches. God owes you good health. And it's, it's a very skewed theology. And it is a theology that is contrary to many of the things in the Bible. So it's very important for us to understand what is God's understanding of, what's God's uh, measure of blessings for every one of us. Now, the theology of God's blessings is far, it is deep, and today we cannot go into all of it. Else means you all must cancel your lunch plans. Anybody want to cancel lunch plans? <laughs> I don't think so. So I will be brief, but I want to just share. I want to just share this morning on what are the blessings and how we can correctly position ourselves to receive what God has in store for every one of us. Now, blessings has always been God's plan. When God created the world, in Genesis chapter 1, when He created every living creature, when He created man, He blessed. He blessed the earth. He blessed every living creature. He blessed man and, wife and woman as well. He said, go and multiply go forth. He blessed them. It was always in God's heart to issue blessings over His creation. And then furthermore, in Genesis chapter 12, He singled out a man by the name of Abraham. And He pronounced a blessing that continues on across the generations. I just want to read to you from Genesis chapter 12 verse 2. This is the Lord saying to Abraham, I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. Verse 3, I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Now we need to, to really understand this, this verse. The Lord's blessing is so that you will be a blessing. The blessing is not to remain with us, but is to be channeled out to be a blessing. And in case Abraham didn't get it, the Lord further explained it in verse 3, and in you all the families of the earth, not just your own generation, not just your own lineage, but all the families of the earth is to receive the blessings because when the Lord blesses, He blesses so that we can be a channel to not just our own generations, not just our own families, but to the families of the earth. Hallelujah. You know, when you get a missions pastor to preach for you on, on, on CNY, everything becomes missional. Hallelujah. <laughs> But it's not me, it is in the Word of God. God's blessings are purposeful, church. God's blessings are missional. I'm going to say this one more time, and I hope I hear more amens. God's blessings are missional. Hallelujah! God's blessings are for us to go forth and do what God wants us to do for the kingdom. Ha <sighs> ha! Now that we understand the basis of the blessings, I believe we all need to learn how to unlock the blessings that God has for every one of us, you and your household. And the first thing, very important, the first point, you need to be convinced of God's blessings. Be convinced of God's blessings. Don't you like this, this, this picture here? It's so marvelous. It's a, it's a, I, I love that the, our Mac, Mac team, media and communications, they, they really take it on. I don't have to direct. Let's give God the glory for an amazing team, yeah? So they came up with this concept of a keyhole because when you unlock, there's so much beauty that lies ahead of you. So that's why it's so important for you to take note of how you 
can unlock God's blessings. All right, so be convinced of God's blessings. Romans 8 verse 31 and 38, I'm going to read to you briefly right now. What then can we say to, say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? And going on to verse 38, for I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Church, you must first be convinced that God loves you. When you are convinced that the love of God is so real, then you can be convinced that as much as you love your own children and you want to bless your children, when you are convinced of God's love, you can be convinced that God indeed has plans to bless you. Amen. You know, along, along life's journey, different things can happen to us. Different situations can make us feel like as though we have let God down. Maybe we have done things that we know was not pleasing to the Lord. And then the, word, the voice of the enemy says, confirm you cannot get God's blessings. Confirm one, God doesn't like you. God is not happy with you. And we forget that God is a God of love who still forgives when we come to Him. There is restoration in the love of God. Nothing can separate you. There is nothing any one of us could have done that could ever separate you. And don't, let, don't listen to the lies of the enemy. Don't listen to all these things. Listen indeed to the Word of God. I, I struggled with this area. You know, when I was a young believer, I used to say, wow, I think I've done so many things that completely, you know, like disqualified me from receiving the blessings of God. And, you know, that's why I read the Bible, pray every day, really, really, you know. And then when I was reading this Word, and at that moment, the Spirit of God just convicted me and just said, Sue, the Holy Spirit don't call you pastor one, you know. <laughs> the only way is Sue. Don't you know I love you? Just come to me. Nothing will separate you from my love. And it was just a simple message, but I believe some of us here, we need to understand that. You know, the work of the enemy is to make you feel condemned. But the work of God is to make you feel restored, to bring you home. So if that's you, even this morning, whether you're in, on site or online, I want to speak to you and assure you that God loves you and God wants to bless you. Be so convinced that God has a plan for you, that God has a blessing for you because God has positioned you to be a channel of His blessings in the world out there. Amen. Number two, after you are convinced to receive God's blessings, we need to recognize. We need to recognize God's blessings. What does blessings look like? Does blessings only look like a brand new car? Does blessings only look like a very handsome young man who proposed to you? I'm still waiting, you know. Okay, anyway. <laughs> what does blessings look like to you? Joy, that's right, I love that. We need to recognize God's blessings. I want to just leave a few verses for you to know that the Word of God is here. That's why you need to read the Bible every day. This is the equipped pastor talking now. You need to read the Bible every day. You know, not as a routine, but because you are hungry. God, I need your Word to bring me through. And so here are just a few of the nuggets to remind us how the blessings can look like every single day. Isaiah 41 verse 10, the Lord says to everyone that's here, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Wow, so many things the Lord wants to do for you. God's blessings on your life may look like courage for a new season. God's blessings on your life may look like strength in the midst of storms. 
when you hear difficult news, whether it's from your loved ones, whether it's from a doctor, you hear difficult news. You get strength from the Lord. God's blessings on your life may look like assurance when you feel very alone. Sometimes you could be surrounded by so many people, but you feel so alone that people do not understand what you are going through. And that's when the Lord's presence comes in to assure you. Ephesians 1.3 says, Blessed be God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, every one of us here, with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. It's not some spiritual blessings. The spiritual blessings are not just for pastors or leaders. He has blessed every one of us with every spiritual blessing that you need. If you need, sometimes you say, Pastor, pray for me. I need to hear the Word of God. You know what? You can hear the Word of God on your own right there. As you read the Bible, as you pray every single day, that rhema word will come. Rhema word just means that right word that comes at the right moment with the empowering of the Holy Spirit. That is a spiritual blessing. Yes, take that job. No, don't, don't shift to that place. What is the Lord speaking to you? That is the spiritual blessings that you can unlock. You can say the spiritual blessings can be the words of wisdom, knowledge, discernment, the gifts of the Spirit are here for us because the Lord wants to empower the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how you be a blessing in your marketplace. That's how you be a blessing to, to your family members. You have opportune moments even in this season as you visit and you speak into them, ask the Holy Spirit, use the words of my mouth to bring the wisdom of God to bring clarity. And as, as you release the words to others, the Lord will also release them to, into your own hearts, into your own lives. Wow, that is a blessing. We are never, never alone. God's presence. I, I loved how, how Emmanuel was leading us just now, reminding us how Moses prayed. Unless the presence of God goes with us, we cannot go forward. Church, the blessings of God is, is so tangible, it's so real for every one of us, and we need to recognize it when it comes to us. Genesis 50, 20. This is Joseph. Many of you here know the life of Joseph was not easy. Hardships, he was rejected, he was thrown in prison, he was defamed, wrongly accused, all kinds of things went wrong for him. But also at the right time, the Lord elevated him to be the number two man in the, in the kingdom of Egypt. And he said this to his brothers who were terrified that he would take revenge. He said this, As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. God's blessings can even look like hardship. It's hard to hear this, but God's blessings can look like difficult moments. You know, if you read the life of Joseph, whatever he did, if you read in the Bible, the scriptures say, the hand of the Lord was upon him. The favor of the Lord was upon him because he maintained his eyes on Jesus, he, on the Lord. That time, he don't know Jesus, yeah? He knows God, he knows Yahweh. When you're going through difficulties, ask the Lord instead. How can you turn this around? How can I be a blessing in the middle of my difficulties? How can I reach out to someone even in the middle of my pain? We don't know how the outcome is going to be, but you know what? When we begin to trust in the Lord, I believe that every one of us will be able to resonate with what Joseph said right here. God means it for good. God means it for good and Joseph recognized that the good was not just for Joseph and his family of two sons in Egypt. The good was also extended to his family even in Israel. The good was also extended to the nations who were in famine. And that is how the Abrahamic blessings went down beyond Jacob to the nations 
the families of the earth were blessed. And that's how God wants to use every one of us. You want a blessing? Say, Lord, I want a blessing and I want to be that channel of blessing. Hallelujah. Number three, even as you are convinced that God wants to bless you, that God loves you, even as you have learned to recognize the blessings of God, now, church, we need to understand how to be positioned for God's blessings. Being positioned correctly in heart and mind. I want to tell you a story about Obed Edom. 2 Samuel 6, verse 11 to 12. And the ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed Edom, the Gittite, for three months. And the Lord blessed Obed Edom and all his household. And it was told to King David. <clears throat> The Lord has blessed the household of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him because the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. A little bit background, this is the story where the ark was returning back home, but David didn't do it correctly the first time and there was a, a death because it was not handled in the right manner. And so that's why the ark had a stop at Obed Edom's house. It's just about 12 to 15 kilometers away from Jerusalem. But they had to stop it there. But then David began to hear things because you know what, church? The Ark of the Covenant always represents the presence of God. So when the Ark of the Covenant was with the house of Obed Edom, the presence of God was blessing was blessing Obed Edom's house. And David heard and he said, I must go back to my original plan to bring the Ark of the Covenant into the city of David so that not just the city but the nation will be blessed because of the, God, of the Lord's presence. And so David did the right things and he brought the Ark of the Covenant back into the house of David. But here's the story of the positioning here. In First Chronicles verse 26, we hear about Obed Edom. And Obed Edom had sons, eight sons altogether Shimea, Jehozabad, Joah, Sekar, Nathanael, Emil, Ishaka, Peulitai, <laughs> the eighth. He had eight sons. And then it goes on to tell us that even Shimea had sons born to him, and they were men of great ability. In fact, later on in that chapter, it says the entire household of Obed Edom had 62 males of great ability. Because you know what? And he became a gatekeeper. He became a gatekeeper in the house of God. He basically shifted his entire household to chase the presence of God. He moved his position, hear this he moved his position to run after the presence of God, to be where God's presence was. And for that, he said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper than to be a landowner. I'd rather be found where God is. And the Lord honoured him, honoured him and his eight sons. They all became servants of God. We need to chase the presence of God. Don't chase the hand of God for miracles because when you're found in the presence of God, there is the blessing there. We need to shift our hearts. When I say position, it's not about a physical position, but it is about choosing God, running after God, saying, you know, God is you and no one else. So this year, in case you didn't start it so well on the 1st of January, on the 1st of Chinese, first day of Chinese New Year, it's never too late to start. Start with the right positioning. Let's get, let's get things right. Understand what it is. Don't chase after what the world calls blessings. Don't chase after the material things but chase after the presence of God because there's, there is completeness of, the heal, of healing, that, that there is, you know, different kinds of breakthroughs. And in the difficulties, there is a way to bless the nations, 
bless the families for you and your generations. It's not just for you, it's for your generations. And that's what God is calling us as a church, as a church to receive the blessing so that we can bless the families of the earth church. We sing this song very often and we're gonna sing this song in a little while. But I wanna, I, I wanna, I wanna just read this out to you from Numbers chapter six. Just close your eyes because this is a blessing, a priestly blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift His countenance upon you and give you peace. And now the worship team is going to sing this over every one of us. I want to encourage you just to stand up and even as you sing it, you are singing it to the family of God here and when you're right at home there, I want to encourage you to sing it and proclaim the blessing of God over your household for the generations, not just to receive the blessing but to say, Lord, I want to be a channel of your blessing to the families of the earth. 